Hey everyone, Victor is here, and on this video, I want to look at this synthesis where we are starting with this methylcyclopentane, and we are going to make this substituted piperidine over here as our target molecule. Now, if you want to work through the synthesis on your own first, pause this video now, because I am going to jump into my preliminary analysis right away. So, the first obvious thing that jumps at me right away here is the fact that we start with a five-membered ring, and we end up with a, well, a six-membered ring containing nitrogen. This means that we'll have to break up our ring, and then we are going to reassemble it later somewhere during our synthesis. Now, in terms of the functional groups, we just have the amine over here, so, nothing fancy. So, the most reasonable way to approach the synthesis will be first to break our ring open using the azenolysis, because that is the most common reaction that we typically see that opens up rings and breaks carbon-carbon bonds, and then, once we do that, we are going to reassemble our ring uh, using reductive amination to close everything up together. So, to start with, I'm going to redraw our starting material, and since I need to perform the azenolysis reaction to break it open, I'll have to make a double bond first. And since I don't have any functional groups in my molecule to begin with, the only reasonable option for me to do the first step is going to be the radical halogenation, which is going to give me the following product over here. Now, next, I'm going to do a simple E2 style elimination that gives me uh, my alkene, and now I can do the azenolysis to open up my ring. And just to make sure that I didn't lose any carbons uh, when I was redrawing my molecule over here, I'm going to count them up real quick. So, in my starting material, I have my carbons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, and in my product of this analysis, I have my atoms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So, I didn't lose anything. And notice, we are using the reductive analysis using dimethyl sulfide in the second step to make sure that we end up with an aldehyde over here and not a carboxylic acid. And that part is fairly relevant to us, because we now want to close up our ring making an amine while we are at it, so we got to do a reductive amination, which has to work with the ketones and aldehydes. That reaction does not work with the uh, carboxylic acids. And the cool part here is that since we are going to be making two carbon-nitrogen bonds, one over here and another one over here, well, not really two carbon-nitrogen uh, bonds at the same time, of course, we are going to make one than the other one, the best method here is going to be not just any reductive amination, but a single pot reductive amination using this sodium cyanoborohydride, which can reduce the imenium intermediate right during the reaction course, so we don't have to isolate our intermediates and do reduction separately. This way, we can accomplish the entire transformation in just one single synthetic step. And I do have a dedicated tutorial on the reductive emanation, so if you need a refresher, check it out. And link is, as always, in the description below. Now, what did you think about this synthesis? Did you like it? And, of course, if you want something to ponder about till the next Synthesis Sunday episode, check out this synthesis over here. Do you have any ideas how to accomplish that? Let me know in the comments below. And, as always, thank you for watching. Check out this video next, and I will see you next time!